Our school vision articulates that all members of our community learn together. I'm therefore really proud of the commitment of all staff to professional learning and the way in which it's been recognised in this GTC Excellence in Professional Learning Award. Describe the commitment to and the value placed in professional learning in your education setting. How has this helped shape your collaborative learning culture? First and foremost, we could not have achieved the Excellence in Professional Learning Award without the staff in the school. We've got a fantastic team of staff. We've got a fantastic uh, group of people who are really interested and we're really on board with engaging in a, a professional learning conference every year, delivering learning to their colleagues, um, engaging in coaching sessions, um, being part of induction programmes, supporting people at development post opportunities. So we've really got a really supportive team across the school and that for me is really why we've had that culture developed and it's been recognised through the Excellence in Professional Learning Award. I feel that professional learning is really at the heart of school improvement. It's how we identify where we want to be as a school and how we're going to get there. Um, I think that professional learning is so important within the school for a number of reasons, but here I feel that it allows us to share our visions, to share values, um, to look at a, a sense of community of us all working together and our professional learning allows us to do that. Also, I think that in terms of school improvement, it allows us to focus on teaching and learning, to look at how we are going to make improvements there, and also in terms of developing confidence in the staff across the school. So, as a school, I would say that we are very committed to overall professional learning. Um, there's a clear value on it in the way that it's discussed among other staff members and the value that's placed on um, the importance of sharing um, what we've learned or found out. When it comes to the collaborative learning culture, I'd say just the fact that we're all prepared to listen to each other and the fact that um, our senior leadership team clearly plays an importance on this. A lot of our insights are devoted to finding out what we've heard, heard about or learned about as part of our own professional learning. So developing people is something that really inspires me and in wanting to help people get better and um, I've been supported in my career through many people in providing me with opportunities, formal as well as informal, so I've been really appreciative of these opportunities and I'm delighted to be working in Perth and Kinross Council where that value is placed on professional learning, whether it be at a council level in terms of courses that are offered, opportunities for our staff to, to improve themselves, to help them reflect, um, are widely available but also to be quality improvement officer for Kinross High School where that um, value is so at the heart of everything that's done here in terms of providing opportunities for staff to participate in, in professional learning activities informally within the school, more formally in terms of aspiring leadership programmes, the annual professional learning conference and as well as the engagement with Education Scotland courses. I have also collaborated with the Person Can Ross Educational Psychology Service and with them I have developed uh, twilight in service sessions for teachers in Person Can Ross and a series of lessons that have been used in study skills lessons throughout um, Perth and Kinross secondary schools and that's been really enjoyable developing those um, working with other professionals. Um, as an individual as well I've also been encouraged to present at whole school um, sessions, so um, in service sessions and at um, staff meetings as well and that's pushed me personally, um, taking me a little bit outside my comfort zone but it's something that I've really valued and enjoyed doing. As a head teacher, I have a great privilege in working with talented staff and motivated young people. However, I am aware of the imperative to ensure that we're always trying to improve. In paraphrasing Dylan Williams, we're aiming to create a culture in which all teachers believe they can improve their practice, not because there's anything wrong, but because we feel that we can always do better. It's professional learning that provides a vehicle for this improvement. Um, there's a lot of emphasis placed on, on the professional learning within Kinross High School. Um, 
in the February in service days, we have uh, sessions where we get all the primary schools in. Um, in the past, we have and the secondary school teachers, and we all come together and we kind of learn from each other. Um, we get a chance to host our own sessions, um, which allows a sharing of our own collective professional learning. So if someone has gone off and done something in their own time, um, then they could bring that to the Kinross High School in service day and we can all learn from that. So that's a great way of collaborating. Um, we also get guest speakers in, which is really useful from um, more professional bodies outside of education um, in secondary school. And that allows us to uh, learn from them and, and their research that they've done um, and affect that within um, within our own classes as well. Uh, um, professional learning is the perfect start for our collaboration. So for example as a faculty we looked at pace and challenge and we completed a faculty audit of our current practice. Um, we then, then engaged in a range of professional reading where we accessed different um, literature, we use materials from our professional learning conference, our professional learning hub, and we looked at the data available to us. We then um, created a range of resources that we shared, we then used those um, in our practice, we observed one another, and then we evaluated our impact using our triangulation of evidence. What role do professional standards play in supporting professional learning? When it comes to looking at the professional standards, obviously it's very important that we're all engaging with our own professional learning and we're taking more of an inquiry stance around it, looking to make it more personalised to each one of us. Um, while we have our whole school improvement plan, we've obviously taken time to consider what aspects of professional learning it is that we need to focus on as individuals and the standards give us a framework that we can base those on. I think the professional standards help. Um, shape people's professional learning because it allows you to look at the standards to say and, and self-reflect against the standards. It's 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 not a benchmark but it gives you that, that scope, that guidance, that direction on where your professional learning next step is and maybe a, a, an idea of where you could go to, to, to find out information about that. So in our PRD process we use the GTCS coaching wheel and from that we identify our key learning, our professional learning activities and our next steps. Um, we also chose a couple of the GTCS standards and self-evaluated against those where we looked at our strengths and we looked at how we could evidence those strengths and then following this we also looked at our next steps. Well, I think the, the standards are really important and it, it's quite important that there's different standards for different parts of people's careers. So, for example, the standard for full registration when you become a new teacher um, and compare that to the standard for middle leadership, so for our principal teachers. And I think these standards play a really important role through professional update and professional review and development, but they also play a really important role in how we plan professional learning. So. Um, when we're pulling together a leadership development programme, we're using the standards to help guide what should be in that programme as well. So it really helps create the structure. I've also um, encouraged colleagues to use that in preparation for interview as well, because everything you need to know about education and your job as a teacher is in the GTCS standards. How is coaching and or professional learning conversations contributed to your success? So I am a huge advocate of coaching. I have experienced coaching and it was so transformative for me um, that um, having that opportunity to sit in a structured space which was non-directive and just get that opportunity to reflect and explore my own thoughts and be challenged and be asked questions that helped shape things from a different perspective, I, I really valued. So, I'm a big advocate of coaching um, and it's brilliant that Kinross High School have um, coaching built in for their senior leadership team as well as their middle leadership team and it's something I'm, I'm really happy to see that is, is starting to be rolled out across all their staff. As part of the teacher leadership programme that I did uh, two sessions ago, um, 
that involved, I was coached by um, another teacher through that to develop my own inquiry and carry out my own inquiry. Um, and then the following year, I was a critical friend for the teacher leadership program. And that meant that I was involved in the coaching of other um, participants through their own inquiries. And I found that incredibly interesting because it meant I got to see or have a window on lots of different professional inquiries that were going on um, in many other schools around the country. Okay, so I did a um, leadership uh, qualification with Mr Bain and a few other of the teachers in school. Um, and it's, it's basically a pathway to leadership, middle leadership, so it's um, looking at ways that you can improve I could improve my uh, teaching as well as my kind of relationship building and various elements that go into um, middle leadership roles um, in order to, to improve myself basically for that and to be, apply to them in the future. So one part of that, Mr Bean um, led a coaching session, which is basically I went out and put out a survey to um, five colleagues um, and they were asked to answer anonymously and um, in detail about different elements of me as a person, me as a teacher, and think what uh, where I kind of rated on on various aspects, um, and then that was brought back, and I looked over the answers with Mr. Bain, and basically he kind of coached me into um, thinking about the answers that they'd given in various ways, and I think that's really useful. I think coaching is a is a been a really useful part of that practice because it really made me think in different ways. I wouldn't have thought already, um, pushing me to um, improve in areas that maybe I thought were pretty secure, um, but need to have that extra boost. So um, yeah, that's been really useful, and I think that's key to improving your practice because you know continuous reflection upon your own self practice is is um, it's a big part of being a teacher um, and making sure that the classes that are in front of you are getting the best experience. Um, I would say in terms of coaching, um, it's gone both ways in the last little while. So um, initially, um, when I was more in my early career, I had a lot of support from other um, staff and mentors um, who were prepared to sort of help me out and give me suggestions and ideas. Um, I'm now in the position where I've been able to, been able to take their approach to coaching and um, to coach others um, to further their own professional learning, particularly around digital and digital pedagogies. What impact does your culture of professional learning have on children and young people? I really like the Dylan William quote and I've used it a lot before, um, but a good teacher never stops learning and it's not because we're not good enough, it's because we can be even better and I feel that really resonates. Um, there's always something we can do and we just want to be the best that we can be. Um, I also think it's very important to discuss my own professional learning with my the young people in my classroom and that's happened when um, through the teacher leadership program when I carried out my own inquiry so young people in my classroom in various different classes were completing uh, uh, surveys for me and questionnaires to enable me to gather data um, so I was they were participating in my research and I was able to then feed back to them the results of that research. Um, and now with all of my classes, I explained to them, my focus was on retrieval practice. It's something I use in every lesson. And I always explain to my pupils that um, the research I've done is proven that it's working and is beneficial and therefore this is the point of doing it. So it's about discussing, discussing sorry, my own professional learning and explaining how it benefits the young people in my classroom. I think it's really important that we involve learners in the process of professional learning. Um, so for example when we looked at our whole school priority of success criteria and pupils co-constructing success criteria, we involved them in those discussions, the rationale behind it, and we evaluated our progress with them. And it was really clear that they knew we were all focused on this because they could see that consistency and they commented upon it. And I think learners can, we can both see and feel the evidence of our impact. And we do that in a number of ways. We look through our walkthroughs, through um, pupil motivation, and through a range of data, like assessment data.
Um, my opinion would be that it has helped, anything that helps us improve will over help the overall learning and teaching culture within the school. So anything that we have managed to do to improve our professional learning, um, improves our pedagogy and will therefore impact on learning and teaching and hopefully just make it a more interesting environment for um, our young people within the school. I'd also like to think that as we can model our own learning and the idea that we don't know everything, uh, that helps people pupils understand that well we're not experts we're working towards um, improving ourselves and gives them the idea that they can be doing the same thing. Within the context of English we've made the decision this year to move to mixed ability S3 classes and um, that's the first year we've done that it's quite a big change for us um, and it was really professional learning that allowed us to have the confidence to make that change so we looked at uh, looked outwards to our colleagues and other Perth and Kinross schools to find out what was happening there but we also looked at a wider context schools across Scotland um, and read about the benefits of mixed ability English classes and we've made that decision to to move to that model in English now and we're hoping that that leads to an improved experience for all pupils in English improved attainment improved aspiration better ethos in classes and really our professional learning has been at the heart of that. Well, I hope a huge impact because that ultimately is why we are here. And if we are doing things that have no impact, then we shouldn't be doing them at all. Um, so I think fundamentally it's all about getting the learning and teaching right. Um, I think we saw during something like COVID and the pandemic that we had to act quite quickly um, to upskill ourselves. So in the digital world, you know, as a school, we were dipping our toe in the water with Google Classroom. Um, some departments were fantastic at it, some departments had not really explored it at all. We're now at a point where every subject across the school has access to Google Classroom um, and we've had to do that out of necessity. So I think that has been a huge impact and undoubtedly that has only benefited young people in the school. So anything that we take in from um, our in-service days, from that coaching, um, is is all of it is going towards what's happening in the classroom and what how are you delivering that to the young people um, in front of you to the, to the pupils in front of you so effectively everything that we do in these in these sessions should then filter through even if it's on Promethean boards or if it's on um, I don't know collaborative learning as teachers that's going to then go into um, how do we make effective collaborative learning happen in our classrooms? How do we make best use of groups? How do we make best use of feedback, etc.? So, um, yeah, it's really, it's really important. Um, all the learning that we're doing gets then fed back, and that should therefore raise attainment. It should raise um, relationship building with with pupils. How to deal with difficult situations? Um, it, yeah. So every, everything within the classroom, within the pupils' learning experience, should be technically improved if we're using the, the, the learning that we've gained from, from this professional learning in the correct way. Can you explain the importance of learning by inquiring within your school learning community? So again, bringing it back to the context here at Kinross High School, I think probably a really strong example of how important professional learning is within our community is what we're doing this year as a staff. So we have all joined professional inquiry groups where we have been able to focus on an area of learning and teaching that's of interest to us. So I've joined a group that's looking at feedback. Um, we're working together to read, to share ideas, and then to apply in the classroom, come back and share within our group, but within the wider staff as well. So that's something that we're all participating in throughout the school year. And I think the fact that it's all of us as teachers that are involved in this, we're all in these inquiry groups, demonstrates just how much value we place on professional learning here at Kinross, how important we see it and how crucial we see it to improving outcomes, improving attainment and improving the experience for our young people here. Um, learning by inquiry I think is kind of key to where professional learning um, becomes important. Um, taking inquiry stance, particularly um, for someone like myself who's a science teacher, um, 
scientists are very used to the idea of everything must be right all the time and that's clearly not the case in real life and certainly not the case in education. Um, we need to be quite careful of taking it as an inquiry stance which means you can try things and things don't always work but you have looked into it, you've explored the possibility that something might be worth um, doing more long term. Sometimes it will work, it won't always work in every context and it's important to have had that background and that stance where um, you can be confident in trying things out and letting it see what happens. Um, so as I've said before I'm really proud of the staff and the young people in the school. Um, the staff really want to find out more, they're really inquisitive and I think that really contributes to our culture of professional learning across the school. Um, we set up collegiate groups where staff um, have opted into topics that interest them um, and that has really encouraged that part of inquiry um, and trying to... So as I mentioned earlier, the teacher leadership programme that I completed, uh, I was encouraged to apply for that by um, the SLT in school and it's probably something I wouldn't have considered if I hadn't have been encouraged to apply for it. Um, I've been teaching for over 20 years now, um, I'd had time out to have three children and it really helped me refocus myself um, back towards my professional learning. Um, the teacher leadership inquiry I found fascinating and they talk about on the teacher leadership program they talk about scratching that itch so it's what are you interested in, um, what do you want to find out more about and for me that was a really enjoyable um, place to be. It also um, it forces you almost to focus and dedicate time to your own professional learning because you have to complete the uh, various different parts of the inquiry. So that was a really positive experience. And then this year at Kinross, um, part of the working time agreement, we have dedicated time for our professional inquiry groups. And for me, that shows the value that Kinross High School places on our professional learning because we're given this dedicated time so there's really no excuse. We, we need to get on and inquire and find out more about um, the teaching and learning that's going on in our school. Describe your role as a middle leader. Being a middle leader in Scotland is about putting our values at the heart of everything we do. It's about being the bridge between so many different parts of our school community. That includes our learners, our parents and carers, our colleagues and the wider community. Being a middle leader is about balancing our commitment towards line management, leading learning, school improvement priorities, inclusive practice and helping our team to develop and lead the best they can be. Tell me about professional learning strategy. So in Kinross High School one of the key things we've wanted to focus on is making sure that staff within the school have loads of opportunities to develop their practice. So whether that's through learning more about differentiation, questioning, feedback, or whether it's around their specific skills around leadership, um, we've really wanted staff to be part of that and to build up their skills um, from when they were learning prior to entering teaching, but also um, during various jobs they've had whilst in uh, teaching. So professional learning is really quite important in the school. Um, I think it's it underpins everything we do, so making sure that young people have high quality teachers, high quality learning experiences. We need to make sure that teachers know um, what the most up-to-date um, methods are, but also using technology, but also sharing their huge amount of expertise and skills and knowledge with their colleagues. And that is really been the, the approach we've taken in the school around professional learning. Highlight some key features of success within Kinross High School. I think some of the key successes we've had that are probably unique to us, um, one is the professional learning conference that takes place every February in Service Day. Um, that's pretty unique. Um, we've had quite a lot of other people come see that. Um, we were really fortunate that um, prior to COVID we've had all our cluster primary schools join us on that day and that day really was around looking at um, practice, so learning and teaching practice, but again all of our teachers together and we also invited our primary colleagues to focus in on 
how we can learn from each other. We had workshops from Dundee University, General Teaching Council, um, the local authority, um, and also staff in the school were delivering workshops as well. And we also had a keynote speaker as well. And that, that format of professional learning conference has really stayed over the last six years, I think we've had a professional learning conference every February. Um, and one of the key things that's really struck me by it is the focus that the staff have on it, is they really like that opportunity to have a bit of choice, but also to get together and really focus in on what matters to them most. I think some of the other things that we've done are quite innovative, and that's around um, developing people's capacity. So we've introduced development opportunities. So we've had that in pupil support, but also um, digitally, we've got a digital um, officer, um, and we've had various um, leadership development opportunities over the last three or four years that have been really important um, so that we can build capacity not only in the individuals who take on the roles, but also it means that we are better able to, to improve the school further um, for the young people. Professional learning will continue to be prioritised at Kinross High School. I'd really like to take this opportunity to thank the GTCS for recognising this work and providing this award.